Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our IASA interviews. We are interviewing researchers in a tourism field, and today I am glad to be with Dr. Maduri Sawant. Good morning, Maduri. Good morning, Simona. Welcome. So we are going to so interview Dr. Maduri, who's uh, not just a researcher. She collaborates with the government of India. She wrote six books and 46 publications. And she is a guiding doctoral research fellows from Thailand, Kenya, Japan, and um, United Kingdom, and a lot of countries, and um, far, far more. But I let Maduri introduce herself. Please, Maduri, share with us your knowledge. And my first question, of course, is uh, how and why did you choose to become a researcher? Yeah, thank you, Simona. First of all, good morning, everybody. Um, all the researchers, all the students globally. Uh, I take this opportunity, first of all, to thank, uh, you know, Dr. Ali Abzar, who has been working very hard to make this program a success, Dr. Deshman, and of course, our uh, president of Euroasia Tourism Studies Association, Dr. Enrico Penai, who is really doing a very uh, tremendous hard work for making, you know, our organization a very big success. So thanks so much. And thank you so much for inviting me in this uh, series of, uh, you know, talks on uh, tourism research. I think I would be, I, I hope I would be able to motivate the tourism students globally. <laughs> thank you so much, Simone. Thank you. And uh, so, Maduri, uh, now, what's your main research focus? Yeah. So first of all, uh, you know, I, let me just tell you how I ended up in tourism because it was uh, before like 25, 26 years, you know, at least tourism in India was not a subject which has to be, had to be opted. And I always wanted to be a medical doctor for which I was trying very, very hard. And uh, but then uh, my father was ill and he wanted me to get married and I got married. And then, then I was like in a dilemma whether to do medical or not because I had married to Dr. Rajesh who, is, who was already a professor from tourism. So we were just talking and he said, why don't you change your field from medicine to tourism? I said, it is very difficult. Well, you know, it's very difficult for me to change my, he said, he's, he told me that, see, you will re really enjoy coming into this field instead of doing operations in the operation theater. <laughs> so that was, you know, like, uh, I was also very much astonished Then I did my diploma in tourism studies. I told him, let me first see what this field is and let me decide. Then I did some diploma, I did some foreign language courses in German. And I really felt, you know, that it's right, like a brilliant field. You know, I can do so many things in this field. And, um, uh, more importantly, I was really inclined towards doing tourism business, like always thinking about, you know, a travel agency or a tour operation company of my own. I was uh, thinking of doing a business into medical tourism then because my uh, sister, she's a uh, MD medicine and she used to stay abroad. And we were just thinking about the plans, you know, how medical tourism, that was before like 23 years back. But then uh, I gave an exam of, uh, um, it is a UGC, that is NET exam, that is National Eligibility Test in India. It's a very prestigious exam to be a researcher and uh, you know a professor in any field. So to my surprise, I, I came second in India and I was only candidate who passed this exam in my state that is in Maharashtra. So, Having such a, you know, that was a very big motivation for me. And then everybody said, okay, you are made for tourism and you have to be over here. And this is the way how I ended up in like tourism. And of course, tourism research. Like I went from business, then again, I passed my net exam. I got a very prestigious fellowship that is junior research fellowship, uh, which again motivated me. Like we get a lot of funding for doing our PhD research work. And this is the way I ended up in tourism research. 
But uh, to tell you, Simona, I'm very happy over here. I really go back and I say, oh my God, I would have been working in the hospital, right, right now and doing, you know, sitting with the patients. But now here I'm just roaming, moving around <laughs> and all my school friends are jealous of me to tell you the fact. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very happy over here. And uh, you, uh, coming to your question, like what are the main research areas which I'm working on? I've been working uh, in tourism research uh, since like 18 years now, very seriously since 18 years. And after three to four years, we tend to change our research topics because, you know, whatever the community needs over here, we tend to change the topics. It is not up to us, like, you know, we, we have to do work on this and that. But uh, we do a lot of, uh, you know, we develop a very good statement of problem, think about the community, and then we start of developing the topics. So here, right now, I'm doing uh, three major projects. Uh, one is uh, the, it is with Universities Grants Commission. It's a major project on branding Buddhist tourism in India. The second project I'm doing it with Department of Economics that is for Center of Excellence. They have got a Center of Excellence. And I got a major project in which I'm doing a project on rural tourism, okay, in Marathwada region. And the third most fascinating research work right now, which I'm doing, which is very close to my heart because I really believe in, you know, I'm a very religious person and I really wanted to do something which is uh, related to one of the World Heritage Sites over here, that is Ajanta. So I'm working with Department of Science and Technology and I'm uh, doing an inter interdisciplinary research with chemical technology. And we are working on how the cave paintings, cave paintings of Ajanta, which are from second century BC, okay? how to lessen the aging of the paintings. It is basically, you know, conservation of the painting. So this project is very close to my heart and right now it will be going on like for another three years. And uh, moreover, uh, uh, with my PhD students, uh, right now we are writing research papers and working on tourism crime, rebranding, then uh, uh, yeah, two of my students, they are working on film tourism. One is from Japan, so he's working on film tourism. And uh, uh, of course, I'm writing some very good research papers on spiritual tourism as well. So this is, you know, this is uh, how I'm working right now. Very interesting topics. Wow. So one of my questions would be if you're happy and where you uh, get your ideas and your inspiration, because as you said, uh, uh, yes, <laughs> ideas and inspiration both are, uh, you know, a different thing, like ideas. This is a very good question, Simona, like the ideas to get I research ideas, it's a very difficult thing, especially for the, uh, you know, PG students, post-graduation students who are doing masters or who are on the verge of doing their PhD, okay, they are pretty confused, like what to do, what not to do. But then uh, it's, you know, what I feel is that, and I, I would like to tell all the PhD students or the students who are doing research that, uh, you know, it is, you know, when you're talking about getting ideas about tourism research, it is not just getting up in the morning and thinking, okay, I'm doing work. I will be doing work on film tourism or I'll be working on health tourism. It is not like that. It's very wrong, okay? To get the idea of any uh, research topic, you really need to have a lot of patience and uh, you really need to work a lot do a lot of previews like uh, simona to tell you about our department you know uh, what we are doing since five to six years we are taking small colloquiums and meetings like uh, i'm director of international center for buddhist tourism and we have taken three colloquiums in our department that is indo thai uh, colloquium buddhist tourism colloquium indo japanese and indo euro so in which, you know, we invite the stakeholders, especially the tourists, the people who are, you know, uh, serving them in the hotels, that is hoteliers. Then we invite the travel agents, tour operators. We sit, we discuss about, you know, the problems which they are uh, facing. Uh, we let the travelers speak, you know. You just talk what kind of problems you're having right from when you thought of coming to India or coming to these places. And then uh, what we do is we develop a, develop a research bank. And this bank, uh, we are developing it since six to seven years. And it has come up to be a very uh, good one. 
the second thing which I would like to tell the students is that don't miss the keynote addresses. Those are very important, especially from the uh, academicians and don't miss out the speeches of some of the politicians from your country. Okay, those are also, you, you can get an insight of, on what to work. Then of course, I get some research ideas while teaching the class. Like for example, if I'm teaching promotion, tourism promotion, tourism promotion mix and I'm working on PR, okay? So at the end of the lecture, public relation in tourism, okay? So I ask the students to write five, six topics in which they can do some, you know, short uh, research work or maybe internal for internal exam or maybe for their dissertation, like uh, how to maintain PR with, uh, you know, tourism stakeholders for promotion of tourism in Aurangabad. So they come up with such nice topics. So these ideas we are creating. And of course, I, I really urge all the students to continuously check the websites of UNWTO. And of course, if I'm an Indian, so I would like you to check out the Ministry of Tourism Government of India website and especially the you know, uh, sustainable development goals. Those are very, very important. Check out them. Read it once, twice, thrice, and you will definitely get a very good idea. Discuss it with your professors and uh, you'll get pretty good ideas. Now, this was about the ideas and my inspiration. Like I told you, my husband, <laughs> Dr. Rajesh Ragde, he brought me into this field. So he is my inspiration. And of course, there are many friends, like my friend, my friends are there, relatives are there who always inspire me. My kids also inspire me. My daughter, she has already done her master's in tourism as well. So she also inspires me and they help me out in my research work. Of course, my family is there, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, my parents. Everybody inspires me. Whenever I'm traveling anywhere, I meet so many students. So all are inspiring. I love people. I like to talk to them. So yeah, life is inspiration. I love it. So I'm it's like, you know, uh, so many new things are coming up after meeting people. So this is the way how I get inspired. Wow. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you, uh, especially because uh, your tips are very, very important uh, for students like me, but also for who is already a researcher. And thank you for uh, uh, the last answer that is life is an inspiration and love. Thank you. So um have you got any tips for phd students um if you if you go back in time what have you done differently for example oh uh, yes yes so what uh, differently definitely uh, instead of just write writing research papers all the time you know you really need to change your focus okay number one you have to wherever you're staying around you know uh, the first motivation of your research should be, you know, serving the community where you stay, or maybe, you know, far away also, like I can do a research work in somewhere in France, and that would be important for the community over there. So this is, this should be a very important motivation because uh, uh, what I see is that, you know, many students, they keep on writing without motivation, because ultimately your research should be or somewhere or the else, it should be of use. Like, for example, I have done a research project on, uh, it was a major research project on socioeconomic impacts of tourism in Aurangabad district. It was from 2013 to 15. So after that, what we did after my project, I know publications will be there. I got five publications, everything was done. I was very happy with the publications. I was getting citation. But in my heart, I was thinking, oh my God, I'm sitting and I'm only getting citation or maybe I'm just getting referred. Like, what do I do in the community? So what we did is we started a program that is prosperity through tourism. Okay. In Marathi, we say it, Paryatanatun Samruddhi Kade. Means then we went and we reached the local people. Nearly like 2,000 people in three, four years we reached. And we, uh, I, we told them about, you know, what are the socioeconomic impacts, how you can come into tourism, how you can earn. So, you know, my research was actually implemented. So I was feeling so happy. The second thing is that uh, when I was doing my projects on Buddhist tourism, uh, doing the research, one part, the other thing, what I did, I started developing some courses, short-term courses on that, which were beneficial for the 
students. So this is, you know, application of tourism research into uh, other things. Like I told you, one of my research projects is on conservation of Ajanta caves. So here I, I felt that, okay, in my lifetime, I should do something for this very important World Heritage Sites, which is, which is very near to my heart. So then I started doing work, you know, like that should be, you know, actually conserving the caves, <laughs> talking with the stakeholders. So my point is that whenever you're choosing your topic, you make sure that it should be implemented. And talking about quality and quantity, you know, nowadays, uh, don't think about uh, quantity, you know, you work on quality. I know, you know, we have to, you all have to have a lot of uh, citations and get a good job, this and that. But Simona, let me tell you, uh, you do little work. Like I have seen many researchers who are writing 10, 15 research papers. And uh, I don't know how they are writing it because it's very difficult to do like very quality research work in that. So uh, quantity doesn't matter. I think for me, citations also don't matter. Don't think of it. Unless and until, you know, one day you're getting up, you're satisfied. Okay, my research work is helping somebody. Okay, the poor are, are getting jobs or maybe somebody is getting motivated. Okay, my students are doing really well. Like one of my students, she's working on tourism crimes. It was so difficult. We had taken Goa, Gujarat, Maharashtra, going to the police stations in Goa and all was so difficult. But we came up with very good policies, you know. So that was a satisfaction. So I urge all the PhD students and the students, don't worry much about the quantity. You switch on to the quality of your work. For first thing, you should be happy yourself, you know, and you should really try to give something to the society. Then and then only you will be remembered as a researcher, I feel. Thank you. Thank you, Madhuri. It, it, it is very, very important. So again, you know, care about your job and even about the others. So your job, your work can really make the difference. Because yeah. researchers, they do, they make the difference. And um, thank you. Um, one, one last question, even if uh, you already more or less answered it. Do you find it easy doing your job and researches? <laughs> yeah definitely it <laughs> for me being and you know like uh, and uh, you know i'm working so much i'm taking my lectures i'm doing admin part i'm taking of my care of my kids of my home and everything it be, it's not easy but uh, i'm enjoying it that is very important and uh, moreover you know like i would really tell the phd student whoever wants to do research work uh, it's very exciting, you know, it's very exciting. You really move out, you go to the tourist places, see so many people, work with them. And uh, moreover, you know, like you talked about how easy and why it is easy. So I would like to give very small tips to the students. First of all, if you all want to do PhD, uh, of course you also see Mona. So you really need to, you know, have a passion for it. Don't do it like, because I'll get a good job. You have to have a very uh, good passion for it. Then uh, number two, you know, if you are doing research, you need a lot of commitment. So you really need to have a very organized uh, work. So what you can do is, and of course, now your generation is there, our generation is there. We are exposed to a lot of information and a lot of people, unnecessary people. So we talk to them and I don't know, so many things are there. So what I feel is there, uh, talk, uh, talking with my students or observing them, I think you should really have an emotional management. Like this is very important uh, to do your work. That is very good for your mind, body, soul, everything. And of course you have a lot of time, 24 hours time is a lot of time. Even if you sleep for eight hours, for another 16 hours, you can work a lot. Uh, so, but you know, you have a lot of time, but how do you, develop uh, sorry how do you you know uh, do the management of energy because see of your age you know you have a lot of energy you know but for our age you know we tend to lose so it's very important for you all to you know do some really workout your body workout and then mind and soul workout also is there and uh, 
what i suggest everyone do breathing exercise i do it a lot we call it pranayam okay so it is breathing exercise in which we have our whole body very calm and we get a lot of oxygen in our body and it's very helpful at least for me it's helpful i we take some sessions for our phd students in our department and that is helping them a lot okay so it's very um, it's uh, you know you all can just note it down pranayam you all can do it's like 15 minutes exercises that will really help you out and you really need to have a very good workstation also and uh, in your home so that also will create a lot of positive vibes and energies wherever you are sitting so that will also help you out and uh, yes definitely i urged like i told you it's not easy but you really have to make the things easy by doing you know uh, by making a very having a very systematic approach and then things get you know very quick like when i was a phd student i was just worried about doing my phd it was just one phd but now i have to take care of like six phd works plus my major projects plus my research uh, papers and so many other things are there so you know you have to really have a balance between you know your emotions your energy your time and everything then you know you will you will do wonders in your research i feel thank you madhuri this was an unexpected but amazing tip to manage emotions and balance and take care of our body and our soul i think this is important in life in general no not only i mean in uh, for phd students or researcher and uh, it was really i'm astonished because uh, it's uh, really unexpected but i think it is uh, a key for a better life so thank you for sharing with us that you do this actually uh with your students uh, and you do it personally i personally agree with you so thank you and if you would like to add something uh, else uh you're free and then uh, we we say goodbye to yeah, the yeah, people yeah. who are watching us yeah simona i would like to really add one more thing is that i really want you know uh, like when i'm teaching my post graduation students you know most of them they come up they say we want to do business this that but you know most like 40% of the students they are really motivated in doing to some research so i really urge uh, the students all over the world globally in india anywhere in the world to really go into this amazing field of tourism research because it's very exciting moreover in future uh, you will be in demand because um, research manpower will be definitely in demand in coming years and uh, you have a lot of funding opportunities the only thing is that you all don't seek it well so you have a lot of funding opportunities at least in india you have so uh, because government is giving a lot of funds and uh, moreover you know i think uh, if you become a tourism professor and researcher you will be always with young people like simona right so it's with young energies all the time so you know we also feel ourselves so young and you know lively so i think this is a wonderful field you know you all should try it you all should come of course with dedication if you have a good dedication then definitely you should come here and we all are here to motivate you like after this after my interview like uh, i don't know many people will be seeing me but i feel you know you all can uh, contact me anytime whatever about your research topics or maybe about anything you feel like talking to me i'm there on media like linkedin and facebook so it's okay you know you all can just or at least mail me uh, what kind of topics you think and how you can approach and all these things i would be really very happy to uh, talk with the youngsters young researchers and uh, simon about you you like uh, so you know young and dynamic lady i'm so happy to see you i think we are meeting for the first time but uh, yeah and the best wishes to you too do your research thank well thank you thank you very much maduri um, i'm i'm very happy about this interview i learned a lot uh, so i think uh, 
people who are watching us. And as you listen to Maduri, she is at uh, your disposal. And um, the thing that uh, amazed me is uh, that I can really feel that collaboration, union, and passion are the main keys to work in this field. And the people like uh, Maduri, who are open, um, they really can change. They like an hour life, the students' life all together. We can grow and enrich each other all together. And that's special. So thank you, Maduri, for sharing thank your time you. and your knowledge so with us. Thank you. And thank you, thank everybody you. who's watching us. And uh, if you have any question for Maduri, she said you can contact her on, um, on her website, on her Facebook page, on LinkedIn also. And so please, please do. And we are here for you. Thank you, Maduri. Have a great day. And goodbye, you too, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.